Welcome, everybody, to this week's episode. We really appreciate you joining us. This podcast really shows us how we can all learn, live, and thrive off of each other. By sharing our knowledge through our conversations, we will impart some knowledge whilst learning ourselves how to progress even further. Here is your host. podcast. This is Mary Scott and you know what a day it's been here in the office and today my special guest is speaking to me in the UK and I have never interviewed someone with this background before so you are in for a real treat, a different dynamic if you like but all of my guests are different dynamic but This woman brings a very special perspective and I hope that you can see this and I can capture it for you today. My guest is Monica Uvari, like I said, from the UK. She is a qualified nutritionist and a qualified chef and she tells me that's a very unique thing. So we're going to talk to her a little bit about that. And also she's qualified in EFT, which is emotional freedom technique. So she brings a wealth of knowledge to our call today. And I hope that you will learn something from her. Monica, hello to you there. Good morning to you. How are you? Good morning, everyone. Thank you very much. That's a beautiful introduction. (laughs) Thank you. I'm good, thank you. It's quite early. So I started with my little coffee. I can't wait to... To have a nice chat with you. That's lovely. Now, Monica, just for people I know where you've come from, <laughs> tell us, you've got a beautiful accent. Tell us where you've come from and what what's taken you to the UK. Just, just give us a little bit of background, if you would, please. Yeah, so I was born actually in Transylvania. So my accent is not really Hungarian because I'm Hungarian. So I learned English from Romanian language and everyone is asking me, am I Spanish? Because my accent is kind of different. I don't feel it. So (laughs) thank God. Uh, So yeah, well, after we moved uh, from Transylvania when I was 13 to Hungary to uh, our grandmother. And uh, I kind of traveled in a, and lived in other countries like in Amsterdam in Holland for five years because of a significant one and then I moved to London so I was living here for eight and a half years and um, for a couple of years I moved back to Hungary and now for a couple of months I'm back again to UK that's to London. fantastic I now understand more fully why your accent I rather like it but I'm used to talking to you tell me this what what's exciting about traveling you know moving at 13 you've you're clearly not 21 you've traveled around you've experienced life what's what's the best part of that journey well to be honest I kind of I think like challenges we also moved quite a lot when I was little so I kind of used to it. It's it's not a big deal to move to me to move from one country to another. For for many people is is an amazing challenge. They would never do it. I know. <clears throat> but for me, it's like even now moving back to UK. I just packed my stuff in one luggage and I was here. Like you go in holiday. <laughs> <laughs> That's beautiful. Well, I only I only jumped from New Zealand to Australia and. Fortunately, there's some differences in those cultures and and um, countries. But is there one thing you know about your growth, and maybe let's add personal development along that trip that you would say was a really big event for you that set you off on this growth for yourself. Um, well, I'm kind of spiritual. Or, I mean, yeah, people, they use the words to describe something, which I would say, I would say it's something coming from inside. So it's a, 
um, I, I didn't have a word for it for many years. I didn't know what spiritual means. You, you just do what, what you feel for your soul is good. And I remember, I, I was kind of raised or maybe born like this. I remember one, one time uh, uh, another clairvoyant, would you say, person, she, she said to me that I'm a very, very, very old soul. And I was really surprised because I didn't know what she means. And then, you know, after a, quite a couple of years, maybe like 20 years, I, I, just, I just got it, what she meant. So kind of I was born like this. But uh, the first, let's say, big, big change, it happened when I was 18 years old. And um, it really changed my way I was looking at the world and people and kind of give me a piece of, peace of mind. So I had a little accident at home. I fainted and I hit my head very badly. And um, <clears throat> I was carried by my mom and my cousin in the room. And then in the next second, I found myself floating above my body with like two meter high. And well, if I would hear someone else, talking about things like this before I would like, okay, right. <laughs> but you know when ha things are happening with you, you don't care anymore what other people think. It's that your experience and it's coming the time when you want to share it with others. Because there are many aspects of life. We, jo we don't just born to, to go to school and go home, go to work and go home. It's, it's more it's more than just being a body. So me, like floating like two meter high and checking down on the scene, what was happening in front of me, uh, seeing the body I was in, it was really strange, but it was a totally normal thing. For the soul, that's a normal thing. Whatever happens is good for the soul is here to experience whatever. It doesn't choose, you know. Whatever comes, it's fine because it wants to experience everything. And and actually, I had the feeling that I'm fine leaving that body. I have no problem. Like, kind of, kind of, kind of felt that, that everything is all right like it is. I'm in the right place. And whatever I'm going, I'm safe. I'm loved. Uh, cared for so and then I uh, I paid attention to those two people because I didn't realize them I think everything is just happened so quick and uh, then I saw that oh that is that in that life that's my mother and that the other person is my cousin and in that moment I was curious what they feel because my mom was kind of very very uh, close she didn't like to show too much of a feeling, even though sometimes uh, she told us that she loves us and we can we can count on, on her. But she was kind of a tough person. <clears throat> and when I felt her love, I was really surprised. I, I wasn't expecting her love to be that big for me. And I have goosebumps. And, uh, and I said to myself, oh, I want to experience that love. And when I said that, I was back in my body and I woke up. So from that moment, I know, I knew there is more to life than just being a body and doing something on this planet. So we have the soul. Actually, we are the soul in a body. We are the soul and we have a body. So that, that realization it just put me in a situation where I looked differently everything, even people. I knew they are more sensitive inside than it looks like because I experienced it with my mom. You understand? Yes. Yeah. So I kind of, I kind of, <clears throat> I was more empathic with, with everyone since I got 18 years or so since that period. My goodness. That is such a good story. You must have you must have given yourself a really good bang on the head. 
it, like it was quite yeah. a serious event, not only physically, but this event sounds like it it changed the whole trajectory of your life. And I love yeah, what exactly. you're saying, Monica, I love what you're saying about your soul. And 18 years was a couple of years ago. <laughs> what, what have you learned about your soul and soul <laughs> purpose? Would you like to share anything about that? Um, yeah, actually, <clears throat> I'm sure I'm sure that was the first uh, step um, towards my development and well it came another a couple of that but what got, uh, kind of put me on a path where I started to love care and help people even though when I was little I was always you know protected the weak or smaller always we we were kind of grew up together with our friends like that so, and um, so kind of guided me in, 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 a, in a direction where even like starting my first job was a waitress. So I started really paying attention to the people uh, getting a bit of a piece of my soul with, let's say, a coffee. And they were really, really thankful. So just little things like this, the way you look or you treat others. Is, is very important, and not just for them, but especially for your development. And to know to know who you really are inside your soul, not the body, where you were born, or your name, or you know what job you have. We don't even ask ourselves anymore, like, <clears throat> are you all right? Or how are you? What's happening with you? We are just expecting everyone to say, yes, I'm good. Well, no, no one is good. No, no one is good. Everyone has their own problems. And like being a Hungarian, living in UK, you know, here, English people, they always say, oh, I'm good. But when you ask me, like a Hungarian, I will answer you how I am, honestly. <laughs> and many people, they don't expect that. And then I'm telling them, listen, just tell me, you know, that's a, Maybe kind of an Eastern European thing, Maybe. being asked, being asked, how are you? Kind of it gives you the opportunity to share something with others. Of course, you don't have to pour all your own life and traumas on it, yeah. but just like at least a little, little something which helps your soul to deal maybe with things, wow. with traumas. Yeah, that's lovely. I like that. And the other thing that you said was there you were two meters out of your body and you Say felt again? the love well you were there out of your body you know and you felt the love and I understand that the love drew you back into your body is that right yeah yeah exactly so yeah what I realized is uh, oh, nothing is really important more than love we, we are here and we, we stay here because we want to experience, first of all, love and connection. And, well, some bad things are coming, you know, during the period we are on this planet. But that's fine because the purpose of life is actually love, in my experience. The purpose of life is actually love. Wow. Wow, can you say more about that? I love that whole notion of this is the purpose of life, is love. Wow, beautiful. Yeah, and actually love has many aspects. And many people, they just don't realize uh, even infinite aspects because we don't have words for every aspect of love. We just call it love. So let's say you have a different love for and every person. You, you cannot love two people same way is like we don't have the same fingerprint and that's eight billion people so imagine loving eight billion different way people you know it's... the love from your family is different even the love from every each of your family member the love for a friend or for a stranger 
how many you see how many facebook you know like <clears throat> videos like strangers sacrifice their life to save a stranger right that's driven by love nothing else so the love for nature love for animals some people they feel they love animals better than human beings <laughs> yes that's true <laughs> That's so true. love for the love for whatever does exist, or even our planet, our universe, love for God, and so on. That's beautiful. Yeah. So this sounds like I'm speaking to a very spiritually enlightened soul. And then <laughs> is it time then to weave in the nutritionalist? And the chef, I mean, tell us what led you to becoming a nutritionist. And then I think it was nutritionist first, then a the chef. So tell um, me what what uh, took you in that path. So actually, uh, my first profession was, was uh, <clears throat> a catering high school where we learned to cook, bake, uh, waitressing, or, or to work in a hotel like in reception and stuff. <clears throat> but since I never stopped uh, learning, so like now I'm 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 kind of having my tenth diploma, but not because they give me a paper, because I'm interested in so many things, and uh, I like to learn to know more. And so the, my first profession was a chef, but I didn't like to work like a chef. Uh, uh, I like I'm more artistic, so I don't like to make the same food hundreds of times again and again, you know? Yes. I like to, to to change things. I think I'm not that person who who, who can get stick to to one uh, uh, task and do that task a million times. I like changes. I think that's challenging and I like challenges. So um, then later in life, um, I realized that um, what we were taught in the school to cook, it's not healthy, actually. So it's not a healthy way to prepare our food, because if everything is cooked and fried, uh, you, you, don't, you don't get vitamins. Many vitamins, you know, they got destroyed by the heat. And even is making the food carcinogenic, which is cancer causing, especially this kind of refined oils and you know what are on the market we they they call it safe but they're not so uh, it, it is causing a lot of problems to anyone not just like cancer but hormonal problems that's the first thing you know when you start to gain weight and you don't know why because you haven't changed anything and um, <clears throat> i started to be sick myself too and I said, I just don't understand. I eat healthy. I I, I am fine. I mean, I don't smoke. I don't drink. Um, sometimes I drink a coffee. So it's like, what's happening? What's different? And then I went to the doctor and it came out. I have heart problems. Then a lump came on my on my neck. So So it just didn't make sense for me. Like, from where are coming these problems? If, if I learn that I eat healthy. So we're going home. Um, I don't have to tell you how I felt when I came out from the doctor because they said they can't help. Like uh, you go through surgery, chemotherapy, and that's it. And then I asked, okay, and, and you can heal me. I mean, and they said, uh, heal? Not really. So that was a big shock for me because I thought the doctors are there to help us, to heal us, right? To gain back our health. Mm. Well, so that that day actually, um, it changed my life again. Uh, everything I thought, you know, we in our mind, we think there are so many things important than us then our health, then this, then that. We don't put ourselves in the first place to take care of. We always take care of others first. 
And that day came coming out from the dock that I kind of freeze. And in that sector, everything was, I thought is important or was important for me. It just wasn't anymore. And the only thing it remained important, it was my health and my life. And I went home, not, I wasn't the nutritionist at that time, but I went home and I knew I have to find a different way. I want to know what is this problem? What is this sickness? What is causing? Because it's just, you don't get any cause from anyone. Mm. And then in like a couple of days, I found out from doctors who turn nutritionists and, and scientists, I, I'm not a faint-hearted person. So I was really, really looking in, into, into many scientific researches. And I don't trust, like, let's say Facebook, if someone says, oh, just drink uh, one, uh, one, cup of oil every day and it will be healed. No. And then I realized what it is. And I wrote myself a diet. And this lump disappeared in like two, three weeks. I still felt the pain for another three, four weeks. You know, when, uh, and, and then uh, going to the biopsy because I had an appointment to go to biopsy. It wasn't there anymore. And, and the doctor said that, uh, wow, miracle happened. And I said, no, th this is what I did. So they s still think it's a miracle. Kind of they, they don't want to accept that there are different ways to heal. Yes. Yes, that's true. And it's interesting. And what a, what a great story and what a pivotal moment in your life to make changes. But what I also heard was that you had an intention and a strong one at that to actually heal yourself. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. so my question is, so where did you get the information? Was this all from the internet research? Where did you get the information to write yourself a diet to heal yourself? How did that happen? Yeah, um, to be honest, you know, when I came out of the doctor and, and anything just Everything was just disappearing, whatever I thought is important. And when, when you are left with that, you have to save your life and you would do anything. I don't think too many people reach that level because they, they still believe doctors to help them. Don't get me wrong. Doctors are important. You know, when, when you have to solve things quick, like you break a bone or do a surgery or so or you have a serious infection you cannot uh, uh, heal by yourself. I'm also not against antibiotics. So, but recently we, we, we just consume too much medication and too much antibiotics. So even antibiotics is ruining our colon. And from there, all sicknesses are coming in because the immune system, 70% of the immune system is in our colon. When you destroy that 70%, that's Absolutely. it. People with cancer, people with cancer, they usually they are uh, their immune system level are below twenty five percent. Imagine people with HIV; they have like two three percent of immune system working. Mm. Yeah. So when I came to the doctor, I knew I have to find a way. When 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 a thought like this is coming to your mind. You can't stop yourself not searching for the answers. Many people, they are not curious in this way, but they don't know the way. It's like they are stuck. They are in fear. Yeah. And the only way out they see is like, is like just going with the flow with the doctor, whatever doctors say. But I think I saved my own life, to be honest. Sounds like because, it. because um, I wasn't afraid to question things. Why is it happening? Why with me? You know, I had like, why with me? I didn't do anything wrong with anyone. Mm. It, at that time, I said, I eat healthy, so I didn't do anything wrong for my body. But then going home and finding out what is really healthy, it was a big shock. 
In what that way, actually, Monica? In what way? That what I what I thought is a healthy food is not. Uh, many, <clears throat> you know, our food before it used to be organic. Now, now we have to give a separate name to healthy food, which is organic, and we have to. So our food it becomes full with with uh, uh, the toxins like pesticides, herbicides, growth hormones, yes. uh, even genetically modified. So uh, that's not healthy. That's making us sick. Absolutely. And I, so, and oh, I found out, and I found out that when I started to do my research, and I wasn't a nutritionist. So being then being a nutritionist, I learned more. So I saw the I saw the connection why a, an organic tomato or cucumber is better for the body. How bad is to have the let's say conventionally grown cucumber than a, a let's say grown in your garden? Even that one grown in your garden is better than organic. Yes. That's because right. you enrich you enrich the soil, but you don't know if these big companies producing the organic, they pay attention to enriching the soil. Maybe they just don't use chemicals, but they plant everything in the same shitty soil. Sorry about the word. <laughs> <laughs> no, that makes sense. I'm sure the listeners will understand that very clearly. That's fine. Yeah. So it kind of my whole life it was like a puzzle. And every time I put a, a piece of the puzzle back, I had an aha moment and it actually changed my life. Well, it's like a domino, isn't it? Yeah. You had aha, aha, aha. Okay. So that's um so you were an already a chef then and then you became a nutritionalist. And then yeah. you put those two things together and what did you find? Yeah, exactly. So realizing what ingredients are healthy because i can say um, i haven't changed that much the way i was cooking but i was cooking with different ingredients so just just changing your your uh, ingredients to organic or homegrown is is um, kind of in, in like two three th three weeks is removing around 70% of the toxins from your body. Just one change. Wow. So you going you you will not get you will have more energy, you will not get colds and flus, you know? Before I have to I I I, I had like two three times colds and flu in a year. It was terrible. In the past 14 years, I wasn't sick. Wow. Yeah. That's because of what you're eating and your knowledge. And these days you help you help people by writing programs to assist them with their challenges. So yeah. how did EFT come in? When was that injected in here? Tell me about uh, that connection. Yeah, actually Many people would say accidentally, but I don't believe in that. Everything is happening in time whenever you are ready. Correct. So I met, a, I met an EFT practitioner um, not accidentally, like uh, four years ago. And uh, how do, um, do you know these free challenges, like three, four, five day ch challenges yes, yes. On, online? So I participated because... I felt an attraction, like a soul attraction to this person. And I really loved what I I heard, what I felt. And and that was another view how because we were kind of tapping or you know on, on traumas or limiting beliefs or addictions. And and uh, I signed up and I was in her group and we were meeting every two weeks. And even though I thought I was working on my traumas, uh, it just, there are, you know, in a development, I would say a development of a person is kind of, is kind of a, um, an, an circle 
it's going in circle and then it's bigger and bigger with every change. Yes. And and when you work on, on, on a trauma on a lower level, you deal just with a certain parts of a trauma. When you develop, you go in another circle and you meet the same trauma, yeah, on a different level, when you are ready to deal with another aspect of that trauma. And this is what she helped me to do. And actually, before I was like four years ago, I was really shy to even talk one-on-one -on -one with someone. And that also changed during this period. So after a year, she said to me, Monica, you are really good. You should be an EFT practitioner to help others. And, and I said, yes. And I realized that many people have traumas, limiting beliefs, or even addiction holding them back to change their lifestyle. Mm -hmm. So even though I wrote diets, they, they, could, they wouldn't be able to follow but not because that's hard to do, it's not. Because everything is written down, um, you know, like whatever you have to drink, eat, or, you know, how to prepare recipes and everything. So you can't miss it. But if there's something inside, you know, in their mind, in their soul, holding them back to do it. So I said, that's a good idea. So you don't help just the body, you help the soul because they are one. So whatever you do, oh, and I have goosebumps again. Okay. Whatever you do, <laughs> whatever you do, it works because you treat the whole aspect of that person, not just the body, but the soul, the mind, which is one because it's a trinity, right? In one. Yes. Oh, beautifully yeah. said. I like that a trinity. Yes, indeed, that's true. And I, I love this connection that you're making with your soul how you live your life, it's beautiful because I imagine not many people really think about the importance of soul and how it's introduced at birth and how we're all born. We have a soul purpose and it's lovely. Yeah. And would you say you found your purpose in life? Yeah, exactly, exactly. You know, um, <clears throat> we are kind of messy. I felt really messy in my head. I didn't know what to do, what I want to do with my life, even though I was going through stages of development. But um, finding your purpose is, is hard. But the way it happened with me is like I started to question things, to ask, to ask myself questions. Because when you don't ask questions, you don't start searching. You don't look for the answers. So I started always to ask myself, just the first one, why I was born. It must be a reason why I was born. And when you ask more and more, then, then you know, it's kind of um, the answers are coming, like, like an intuition, like from inside. Mm. It's, you feel the answer, but you know it's not your answer because you were never thinking of that before. So... This is when, when I realized we are really connected on a soul level with others, with, with the creator, because if, if we are all one, we are constantly connected. And, and then I started to, to ask more questions, even on a daily basis. Why this is happening with me? And then the answers are coming because you are open, you are interested. In, in in hearing the truth and you will get it and then my my answer was that I was born to to help others I'm I f the second question actually was who am I who I really am mm. and and it's hard to find like that so first you have to know who you are not Yes. So let's say um, I I'm not a liar. Actually, I can't lie. <laughs> you know. So if I'm not a liar, it means I'm a trustworthy person. 
So here it is, you have one, uh, how would you call, um, um, who you really are. Values, you may talk about okay, values. You. Exactly, thank you. So that's the first thing. Then when, when, you, when you are on a course of development, you accept yourself, your look, your who you really are. So then you see the beauty in you. Mm. Because everyone, I mean, based on based on uh, uh, the creator, everything is perfect like it is. So every person is perfect. Maybe we don't understand why, but it is. So then I I, I start to to uh, uh, another value that if I'm not ugly, that means I'm beautiful. But that beauty. Maybe it's not, it's, it's not the same beauty for every person. Maybe I'm beautiful in a certain way for others, right? I guess this is why we attract those person. We are, they are around us because they see some beauty in us. And then in, in this way, you find out who you really are. And I realized I'm a caretaker. Because I like to, to take care of the people around me, even, even parents, friends. You know, I always ask them, how are you? Do you need help with whatever you do or stuff like this? And so then I'm a caretaker. I'm a helper because I help many people. So like this, you, you find out who you really are. And I mm -hmm. think that's a kind of a second stage. So first, why are you here? Then the second who you really are, and and after you know yourself, you start to ask other questions who the others are, and you start to to look at them from a different angle to find out their positive side, because we are tend to look always the negative, even though many people they are like let's say eighty percent positive and just twenty percent negative, but we are just looking at those negative things. So it's not good. You have to know the whole person. And then you know to make a balance until the balance is in a positive. It's fine, especially if they do their best because no one is perfect in this way. And maybe the world is beautiful like it is because it's not perfect. I mean, imagine how boring can be. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, my goodness. You have so much depth of knowledge. And it's interesting, you know, you talk about soul values. And one of the things I was listening to was that you know what you don't want. And isn't this common? We all know, I don't want that. I don't want this. I don't like that. I don't like that. Because when you ask someone, well, who are you and what do you want? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. And I think there's a good tip for today to ask yourself, what is it I don't want? Because clearly that will reveal what you actually do want. And, and I think that's, that's a beautiful thing. And tell me this then. What would be your intention now? You've got all this knowledge. What are you going to do with all that? Or should I say, what are you doing with that? You you have a lot of knowledge here, Monica. I'd I'd love to know more. Thank you. Yeah. Um. <clears throat> um. I I started uh, uh, to build up my online business because I can't imagine myself to just sit eight hours in a place and you know like. Uh, waiting for for patients to come, clients to come. Uh, I'm not good like sitting in a place. So I kind of I I want to work online so I can travel or I can just be on my my organic farm. You know, like planting my own food and enjoying my own food, uh, toxin free and um, yeah, just kind of working online. And well, I'm just in this. Uh, in the beginning of this journey, but there, even though there are ups and downs, I always pay attention to the ups. So I'm, I'm paying attention to the positive things, even even from from this uh, 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 chat with you, Mary. I mean, I got a lot. 
it's a, it's a positive, positive thing. Whatever happens with me, I pay attention. Even if something bad is happening, I try to find something good in it. Or Beautiful. what is or what is what I can learn from that? Because maybe I made a mistake, so next time I can avoid it. And um, yeah, I'm I'm on on my online journey, learning how how it goes, how how things are working online because it's totally different. It is, yeah, absolutely. And it's challenging, yeah. I mean, being open to to so many people, being kind of um, uh, vulnerable. So you you put yourself out, and you can get hurt. You can get many negative, you know, people uh, coming into your your uh, let's say sacred space, who you you never invited. So that was also a challenge for me to accept it, and how you how you uh, handle it. That's important. You don't you don't give your energy away to those people or just say goodbye to them without hurting them. Say goodbye with love. That's when fabulous. We are, back, we are back to love. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. We've done a full circle. And um, I like that. There's always a positive in something. Now, it would be remiss of me not to ask you, and this we will probably close on this, but you've written a book. Is that not true? Yeah, yeah. Um, it's a recipe book uh, for busy people who doesn't have time to cook. So usually they are breakfast, um, even make main many main courses, soups, salads, and juices. <clears throat> it's kind of uh, it, it's kind of covering uh, a, a person need for for every day, and with with healthy ingredients. Um, not too much cooking, but even if you cook, it's like within 30 minutes, everything must, can be done. So you don't have to spend hours in the kitchen and people doesn't have time for that. So, yeah. That's fantastic. Congratulations. And uh, thank you. I'm fortunate to have read that book. It's helped me because uh, I've never been much of a cook, but I certainly am these days. I want to thank you so much, especially getting up early today and sharing your wisdom. You are indeed a wise woman and have a lot to share with the world. And we are fortunate to have you on our Richness of Our Lives podcast. Let me ask you to finish with one word. What's one word that you would like to just leave us with today? Just one word. What would it be? Never give up. Never give up. Beautiful. Yeah. Well, Monica, thank you. you. Absolutely, it does. Absolutely. And, you know, thank you so much. And I think the other other gift that you've given today is love. Yeah. Yeah. I have infinite love for everyone. So just feel free and enjoy everyone. (laughs) (laughs) That's beautiful. Well, thank you very much. This is Mary Scott. Thank you, too. You are welcome. Be sure to share this with your friends and share share Monica's wisdom. There's just so much fruit here. You might actually, uh, you might have to listen to it again to catch all the wisdom that came from this podcast. Thank you again and have a beautiful rest of your day. This week's episode has come to an end. But the fun doesn't have to stop here. If you have any questions, suggestions or feedback, head over right now to Twitter and Facebook and like, share and get involved. Join us next time.